Good evening, everybody. We're back at it again. And for this time, we're going to do whiskey again. Yet again. I'm just in the mood for it. I feel high spirited. So, today, we're going to talk about a whiskey that I've been hearing about for a good while now. It's been highly praised by a lot of people. And it's been always been one of those situations where I've been meaning to buy it and I just don't. But luckily for me, I finally got a hold of it. Angel's Envy. Angel's Envy has been I've, been, I've seen this as the top five whiskey in several lists. And that is no joke. It is considered one of the best whiskeys in the United States. It hails from Louisville, Kentucky. And is a brand new distillery from Rock and Gather. They do have several other um, strength. This one particularly is a pork barrel finish, meaning it's aged in whiskey in a wine cask, and so it's supposed to add that sweet richness to it. I've I've had a little sip of taste of it. Um, today is gonna be the first time I'm actually gonna have a good general generalization of it, so so I can get a good grasp of what exactly I'm dealing with here, and to see if it lives up to the hype. The bottle is actually only uh, about roughly 68 bucks at your local uh, liquor store. Maybe more. And this one specifically is. It's a batch 78. Alright, so it is an alcohol content of 43% alcohol by volume, that's 86 proof. Now, there's a little story on this little tag, and it also has a little nice trans stat wings on the back of it. This is really the story that we got going on here. <clears throat> After 40 years spent upholding bourbon strictness in traditions and heritage, our master distiller decided to try something new. Lincoln Henderson began with an exceptional Kentucky straight bourbon and finished it with a ruby port wine barrels for up to six months, resulting in a whiskey unprecedented smoothness and character. This unique process imbues the spirit of the flavors of vanilla ripe fruit maple syrup, toast, bitter chocolates, and unconventional delicious finish. Boy, if that, if that doesn't give you a hard on, I don't know what will. I'm sorry, it's the, it's the pleats. All right, enough with the play, or play here. Let's get where we're going here. Ooh, that's a waste. Let's pour some for the homies. Alright, like I said, I've never had an official taste of it. I've messed around with it uh, maybe once. And that's probably the first time I cracked it open. And so, I'm actually going to have a good, solid indication of what I'm dealing with without any interference. And with a clean palate. Now, let's see. Now, the sweetness does really, uh, it stands out. I can smell that firsthand. I smell apples a lot. I smell apples a lot. Uh, a lot of spices. I do smell the chocolate. Ah, uh -huh, ch whiskey chocolate. And I do smell grapes, which that enhanced the, the the wine casket. All right, aerate it a bit. Let's see what we go for. It goes down smooth. It does have a nice little strong burn at the end of it. But it's, it is extremely, it's very sweet actually. It's a very, very sweet whiskey. Um, it's not bad. It's honestly, for the price, it's not worth it. I can already point out, um, I've tried whiskey that's a little bit better than this, that's a lot cheaper than this. This, I, I mean, it, 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 it has its praise, I mean, it's not a bad whiskey. Uh, it is good, it's solid, but it's not like something that blew out of my mind. It's not like, oh, holy shit, this is $68 whiskey. It, 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 it's sweet, but it lingers. Um, the, uh, good example I have here. For the price, would be this Buffalo Trace. I I have spoken highly of Buffalo Trace before. I like Buffalo Trace a lot. Um, 
and is relatively more expensive and easier to obtain. Uh, this is more of an upper price because this, this is just like a really beautiful bottle. And it's not bad. It's, 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 not, it's not a bad whiskey. Um, it is smooth for its content, but I'm basing this basically uh, on just basic principle of price range. Uh, it's not worth $68, I'm sorry. I mean, that's the brutal honest truth. Uh, Buffalo Trace is just as good, or maybe even better, you can argue. And that one, it costs 28 bucks. It's a big, giant difference. If you ask me, it's a huge dining difference, and that's really all I can say about it. People do love it, and I'm not gonna take that away from them. They love the whiskey. They love the whiskey. They love what they like. But I always judge things based on is it worth the price, and does it have a clean finish? This does have a clean finish. I mean, I'm like I said, it's not a bad whiskey. It's just I've had similar whiskeys with the same complexity, the same sweetness. Another great example, I'm pulling out my ass right now. It's not even uh, it's not even real bourbon whiskey. It's Irish whiskey. This is Saxon. Same sweetness complex. Same, it does taste like chocolate for some weird reason. It's very citrusy. This only cost me 22 bucks. And again, it goes back to the lesson that not everything that's expensive is good. And not everything that's cheap is bad. You really just gotta go around and play around with what you got. Sometimes some of these distilleries just sell these whiskeys cheaper so they can get their name out there. Like eventually, Buffalo Trace has become a rare whiskey. That's how they all start. They all start like these small batches who just sell out like little whiskeys here and there for cheap. And when it gets big enough, when the name gets really big enough, they start pulling it back. The most infamous ones I can get from the back of my head right now is Blanton. Blanton came out a few years back, or several years back actually. And then you could buy them anywhere. And then one little movie came out. I'm not gonna say which one, but it begins with a J and last name is Wick. Came out and the sudden the popularity for Blanton just went sky high. And now you can't find it nowhere. And then when you do find it, it's up priced for about 200% from an original cost value of $40 to now you can get it for $180, $200. And that's if you find it. So, that just tells you the power of um, popularity can do very well. It might taste better when it's cold, so let's do that right quick. I do got a rock glass right here. And like I said, some of these whiskeys do taste better chill. So, let's do that. Tastes a lot better. It does taste a whole lot better and chill. Um, the the burning sensation is not as prevalent as it was before. It is very weakened. Um, but the hindsight to that is to the trade-off. I don't have the fucking burning sensation no more, but I'm not I don't longer taste the sweetness of it. That citrus, apple, raisin, chocolate sweetness that I had when it was dry. That's the trade-off. <sighs> I'm, then that just takes me back to my original concept and original theory is that the great whiskey is not worth close. It's not worth the seventy dollars round up price that um that it cost me to get it. I really want to like it. I mean, I'll give I'll give it a, a good. Uh, I'll give it four out of five, and I'll give it four out of five because it's very sweet, and when you chill it down, it's very smooth. It's very complex, but the price, man, the, the price needs to come down a little bit. It's not worth the seventy dollars for it. Um, people have the reasons behind it. It's a small distillery, so they can't. They have to compete in certain ways with the other bigger distilleries. Like Buffalo Trace, it's, it's a big distillery, so it's so they, they can afford to sell a, a good whiskey for twenty five bucks. Angel's Envy is more is more very. Very small, so they have to be very minute on what they can sell. But hey, like I always said before, taste is subjective. You find what you like. If you want to go ahead and try it, get yourself. You got the little extra money to splurge. I know everybody out there got them uh, Trump checks. Go ahead and try it out, man. 
you might prove me wrong and that's all I can say about that. But that being said, my friends, drink safe, drink smart, drink responsibly. And this is random drinking guy here saying fairly well, motherfuckers. Nothing to look at. Don't act like you're not impressed.